Good morning. This is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta Social Science Program, and I'm here today at the Mary Spring Nature Center to look at a roof. I could begin by describing this roof. Uh, this roof has a number of shingles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten across, and one, two, three, four uh, rows, ten columns, forty shingles in all. I notice a shingle is missing on this roof, uh, and I also could note its particular slope, uh, the angle of incline, and note uh, some aspect of its condition, that the roof is rotting, uh, and also that it has pine needles and moss on it. So when I note the condition of that roof, and I'm describing the condition of that roof, I'm engaging in description. A uh, rich, vivid description of this particular roof. Why is the roof the way it is? Uh, there are a few possible reasons. The slope is the particular way it is um, because it needs to fit a particular uh, area in terms of its width and its depth. Um, why is it rotting? It's because perhaps because it's old. Uh, perhaps because there's a, another sign nearby that has replaced this one. These are ideographic descriptions and ideographic explanations. Explanations and descriptions that are particular to this roof. They would not be general to all roofs. Um, however, we could uh, engage in a bit of a more general kind of description. Uh, for in instance, we know that this roof has a particular kind of condition called a pitch, uh, and that pitch uh, might vary, um, but every roof has a pitch. Now, occasionally the pitch is zero uh, 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 degrees as an angle. Sometimes that pitch is very high. It could be, I suppose, as high as 85 degrees uh, pitched up. But every roof has a pitch. Now that would be a variable uh, because pitches from roof to roof vary. Um, we could also uh, think about why the roof is there and come up with an explanation that is a bit more uh, general. Uh, roofs exist, we might say, in order to shelter. They don't exist uh, for their own sake. They're there to shelter something underneath. Something like a board that might contain messages. Now those are general descriptions of what roofs are. Uh, a general nomothetic uh, description is one that says, oh, roofs have pitch and angle for various purposes, and that roofs have uh, the, the purpose uh, explanation, why, what is the theory of roofs, they're there to protect and shelter something that lies in a particular direction beneath. That's nomothetic. The idea of the nomothetic is that you would look at a range of roofs and notice that a wide variety of roofs all have pitches and those pitches are vertically oriented and you would also notice that all roofs have, in this theory of roofs, the purpose of sheltering. So the difference between the ideographic and the nomothetic that I have engaged in here is the difference between explaining uh, the particular placement of this particular roof and describing the particular condition of this particular roof uh, in rich detail. That's all ideographic. Uh, ideographic means isolated to this one individual case and looking at a variety of roofs and thinking about what they have in common and developing a story which is a theory of what those roofs are there for and that is the nomothetic approach. So you'll notice that as in the study of roofs, the study of society also contains uh, ideographic and nomothetic strains of both description and explanation. There are social scientists who dive deep 
into a particular a case, a particular instance at a particular time, and want to explain that particular case in vivid detail, every last bit of it. And don't try to think about generalizing, but just want to explain the one case. There are also social scientists who want to look at the characteristics that all social elements, not roofs, but all social elements, such as groups or cultures or institutions or networks, all of those might have in common um, as a variable and explain the variation in the particular attributes along those variables that are held. So some networks might be dense, others might be loose, but that is a, uh, those are attributes of a variable called density. Um, some groups may have a strong sense of identity, some groups may have a weak sense of identity. Strong sense of identity, weak sense of identity are attributes of a, uh, a general variable, uh, which is degree of identification. So that approach is nomothetic. It is attempting to generalize by studying many, as opposed to ideographic, trying to engage in rich description and rich explanation of just one case. As we have for roofs, so we have for societies. I encourage you, as you are working through this uh, distinction of ideographic versus nomothetic approaches to uh, science in general, and science uh, uh, comes from the root scientia, which simply means knowledge, ask yourself, what is it that you know about something? Maybe it's a roof, maybe it's a tree, maybe it's a car. Look for ideographic descriptions and explanations and then try to come up with nomothetic, general uh, descriptions and explanations of the same phenomenon. If you practice this uh, skill uh, with the objects that lie around you in your daily life, you uh, may find it easier then to apply those skills to the less easily seen structures of individuals and societies.